Today I'm going to talk about how to write a will in Texas without an attorney. My name is Laura Hurd and I've been practicing law in San Antonio, Texas since 1987. And this is a situation for people who don't have much property and don't have time to see an attorney. I want to say up front that this fact situation will not fit everybody. If you have minor children, you have special needs children, you have a larger estate that may have a tax consequences, or you have special property, or you have um, any kind of uh, property that is in multiple states or a house, then you probably need to see an attorney because we can't cover all of the possibilities in this video. But Texas does allow a holographic will. Holographic, H-O-L-O-G-R-A-P-H-I-C. Holographic means it's entirely in your own handwriting. So the first mistake that people often make when they try to make their own will is they type it out because that's what they've seen other wills look like. If it is entirely in your own handwriting, it can be a valid will. If it's typed, then there are other requirements other than what I'm going to tell you about. So get a blank sheet of paper, nothing typed on it, nothing printed on it. And in, in the entire piece of paper, you hand write out this, these things. First of all, you want to put a date on there. Now, a date is not legally required, but it is a very good idea. It helps people to know when the will was written and whether another will that you may do later is actually done later or before this will was written because it's the last will that, that controls. So you start out with a date. And let's, let's say this is a situation where Susie is writing this will and Susie has a husband named William and Susie and William have two children, Alex and Beulah. Now, this is a traditional family. There are no stepchildren. There are no uh, children being left out or disinherited. Again, those are special situations where you really need to talk to an attorney in order to make that work. But I have seen many cases in my 35 years of practicing law where people will say, I don't really need a will because I don't have much property or I don't have any property. And then turns out they do have property. They just don't have a lot of property. They may have a bank account. They may have a life insurance policy with no named beneficiary. Uh, they may have a car or uh, even a house. Maybe they just have an IRA or a 401k at work and a small bank account. And oftentimes those are the people that need a will the most because if you have a large estate, it may be worth it to pay the attorney's fees to get that thing probated even without a will, even though it's gonna cost a lot of money, their beneficiaries are still gonna get something out of it. But with a smaller estate, it could be that the attorney's fees are more than the estate are, is worth. And that's what's really sad is if you've got a bank account, your beneficiaries know you've got a bank account it has got, you know, two or $3,000 in it. Or they know there's a life insurance policy that's worth $2,000. But because you don't have a will, the attorney's fees to get that property is going to be $5,000. It doesn't make any sense. And there's no way they can get your $2,000 policy without spending $5,000 to do it. So they never get a dime out of your estate. So we want to avoid that. And so if you're on your deathbed and you don't have time to see an attorney or you uh, are leaving on a trip overseas tomorrow and you're afraid the plane might crash and you don't have time to see an attorney or you can't find one that's going to write a will for you tonight, then go ahead and do this handwritten will. But as soon as you have the chance, make sure you go see an attorney. Show the, the will that you've written to an attorney and ask them if it's a valid will in the state of Texas. Um, you know, It shouldn't cost you a whole lot to have an attorney just look it over and tell you what you left out or what you said wrong or whether it's you know going to work. Um, and that's better than you know after you're dead, your beneficiaries find out what they thought was a will just isn't valid but this is better than nothing, okay? So in your own handwriting, you put the date, 
Um, Susie says, I, Susie, declare that this is my last will and I revoke all prior wills. I leave all of my property to my husband, William. Now, notice I said, I leave my property or I give my property. It has to be a positive statement. Sometimes people say, I want to leave or I wish to leave or I, I want my husband to have. And that has been thrown out and declared invalid because it wasn't a positive statement that I am giving this to my husband. So say, I leave or I give, but don't say, I want to give. I leave to my husband all of my property. Now, if my husband dies before me, I leave my property to my two children, Alex and Beulah, to be divided equally between them. So far, so good. Now you got two options. There's two ways you can go if one of your children dies before you. First of all, if one of your children dies before you, you can say the other one gets it all. Or you can say that the one who died has children and their children take what their parent would have taken. So you gotta decide which way you wanna go on that and you then put that in there. If, if one of my children dies before me, I leave all of my estate to the surviving child. Or if one of my children dies before me, I direct that the portion um, that would have gone to the deceased child be divided equally among that child's children. Next, you need to appoint somebody to be in charge of the estate to make sure that the property gets distributed. That person's called an executor, E-X-E-C-U-T-O-R. The executor of the estate needs to be somebody that you trust who has some uh, sense of responsibility and, and a sense of um, knowing how to get things done. So usually in a case like this where you've left everything to husband, you would name the husband as the executor so he could just take care of everything on his own. I have seen cases where someone named another person to be executor instead of their spouse and it just caused all kinds of problems because the two of them didn't communicate very well. Um, and it would have just been so much easier if they had just let the person who was going to get everything be their own executor. But it's up to you how you want to do that. So Susie's going to say, I name my husband as independent executor. In Texas, that word independent is extremely important. And that's something that you won't see in a lot of online wills that you may buy on the internet. Because those forms, you don't know when they were written, you don't know who wrote them, if the person who wrote it was even an attorney, and you don't know if they were from Texas. Um, in other states, that may not mean anything in other states, so they don't normally put it in there. But in Texas, the word independent can make thousands of dollars difference in attorney's fees to the people you leave behind. So you want to say, I appoint my husband or I name my husband as executor and you want to say, I want them to be an independent executor. Then you need an alternate in case your husband dies before you, who's going to be executor? So Susie says, if my husband William dies before me, I appoint my daughter Beulah to be exec independent executor in his place. Then you want to say, I direct that my independent executor shall serve without bond and shall have as little contact with the court as legally possible. This is an important aspect. A bond is to protect the beneficiaries from wrongdoing of the executor. But if the executor is leaving everything to himself, it makes no sense for him to have to pay the insurance premium for a bond. And I have seen people who didn't understand what a bond was for, and so they said, my executor has to put up a bond. And they did have to put it up because that's what the will said, even though it made no sense in that situation. So I direct that my independent executor shall serve without bond and shall um, have as little contact with the court as legally possible. Then 
you do not have to have witnesses. You do not have to have a notary. You can simply just sign the will at the bottom and you've got a valid will. All you need really for the essential elements is who's going to get the property and who's going to manage the property to make sure it gets to who it belongs to. And that is, it's that simple. However, that is a simple example of a very limited situation. So once again, I want to emphasize that unless you have an attorney look it over, you don't know what you might have said that was slightly different that won't work um, or that um, doesn't fit your situation. You need to consult with an attorney to see under your particular facts where what property you own, what children you have, what your family situation is, whether this will works for you. My name is Laura Hurd. If you want to hear more videos like that, please subscribe to my channel. I do. I did. I'm done. Come see me. <laughs>